Welcome to the Earthworks Podcast, where our team will share the jargon of carbon from many of our turf friends from the past 30 years. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Simmons, and this is the Earthworks Podcast, and I am very happy to have our cohort uh, agronomist, Mr. Jack Higgins, sitting here with me. Uh, and a couple guests that we're going to bring on to today's show and talk about the state of the fertilizer industry because it has been an incredibly rough year and everybody that's been growing grass or any kind of plant material knows full well that this has been a real challenge. We've probably had three or four price increases. Getting trucks is almost impossible in this marketplace right now. Um, so we're going to have an opportunity to talk to our operations manager and vice president, Lisa Kiefer. And we're going to talk to our business partner, Mark Newsom, who has been here with us on the podcast and is a fertilizer expert. But Jack and I wanted to kind of kick this conversation off uh, just to have a little understanding as to what's going on. And, and, and again, ultimately, uh, as you guys know, it ultimately falls down onto your, your floor because the prices always work our way down. And, and again, understand that from any businessman standpoint, there's no way for a business to survive uh, without passing these expenses on. And that's how you know, business works. So uh, you guys are the guys taking care of it. And what we really want to do is talk about, uh, even though the prices of both trucking and fertilizers are going through, what's really happening is that uh, in our side of the world on the carbon-based fertility, prices are going up substantially lower uh, than what synthetic fertilizers are. So if you've never played with carbon-based fertility, this might be the golden opportunity. Uh, and Jack, you and I have been talking about this for a long time. We were fortunate enough to spend some time down in Carolinas last week at the trade show, talked to a lot of guys. A lot of guys were looking at you know the prices uh, in the marketplace. And not only are they seeing the prices of carbon-based fertility, coming into tune with the prices of synthetic because they're going up so high. Uh, but the guys that have been working with for so long are realizing they're also cutting back their costs. So this really is a, a perfect storm for everybody to, to understand that maybe this is a time to look into. Yeah, we're not the first people to have realized this. Uh, I think we, we weren't going to get out of this kind of global pandemic situation unscathed, were we? The, the golf and sports and turf industry did fairly well through yes, the pandemic. We, 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 did, been, we thank, did good. Thank goodness for all that, <laughs> we for did, all of us. Yes. However, the supply chain was ultimately going to catch yeah, up with us. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what we're seeing. And I think um, Lisa's going to do a good job of getting into that part of the conversation because that's really what the issue seems to be, certainly in our realm, like you mentioned, the right. organic fertilizer realm, because... The, the 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 birds haven't raised the price on their poo. Well, they have a little bit because <laughs> there's more cost in, in all the work and well, uh, everything's it. up. Well, that's it. Exactly. But, it's but because of the not. supply chain that's right. gone up. Certainly it, not to the level. We've gone up a lot s slower than anything else has. Exactly. And, and that's going to, uh, I think we're only just seeing the beginning of right. that, uh, especially in the with the synthetic fertilizer yeah. prices. You know, and, and again, the, the message here, the, the moral of the story here is, is a couple fold. I mean, here's an opportunity to start building a fertility program that actually allows you to reduce your inputs so that, you know, down the road, and we've been through this, and we'll talk about this with Mark Newsom, but, you know, I remember back in 2008, and I think you were just coming on board or just uh, about to come on board, but when we had those price increases, you know, when, when, when the price of urea goes up as high as it has now, you know, organics are much more in line price-wise, but we can actually allow a reduction of input. So after a year or two of applying this, I mean, we've talked about this many times, our, our, a lot of our distributor partners and our, our superintendent friends are using significantly less, which kind of sucks for us, we, but it works for them. But you're right. We talk about minimizing fertilizer use, irrigation water use, right. pesticide use. We talk about that in any year, yeah. in any global economic yeah. climate. We, we, we always talk yeah. about that because we talk about the soil. And, and it's not even, it's not really us talking about it. It's really our, 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 our business partners, our, our superintendent clients and sports their guys. And, and I think I've shared this with everybody on our podcast over the years. When we first started this business, we never knew that that was going to be the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that's a good business model. So, hey, I'm going to sell you a lot less in a couple of years. But that's the reality of what we have seen consistently, globally, in every soil type. 
by getting the soil working correctly, we've been able to reduce some of the inputs. And I think the other part of this story is that it really is a story of be prepared, plan ahead, you know, give yourself a lot more time. The days of, hey, I'm gonna order, you know, a couple trucks of, uh, or a couple pallets of fertilizer tomorrow, it's probably done because not everybody's going to have it that quick and that's what we've been seeing by the way that's one of my favorite parts of the soil <laughs> academy is when you you inadvertently point to the sales rep in the back of the room and you say jimmy's not going to like to hear this <laughs> but what we're talking about is trying to sell you less yeah <laughs> ask me how many times i've heard that yeah yeah that's that's probably not my best sales pitch <laughs> but, but it's think the truth. about it. That's, but it that's what we do but it is the truth and 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 again we're in a position now where everybody's tightening their belts everybody's you know planning ahead uh, and now it's an opportunity to look at really what kind of fertility do you want to manage do you want to build the soil do you want to get the soil working for you or do you want to continue down this road of, of constantly burning out the carbon in the soil and creating a situation where you need more needing more of a commodity that commodity that the price is only going right. up and up and up and and i think we'll hear this as we introduce mark newsom i think we'll hear more about what the future of the market might be and i don't know that it's a good story right now i mean this this pandemic and the supply chain thing uh has dragged out for a long time you know we've been a year without moving almost anything so everything is slowed down and i think there's a lot of profiteering going in not that i want to get into any political issue on this, but but there's a lot of catch up to be done. And I don't think we're gonna see uh, everything is looking right. It's gonna be at least through the next year and maybe well into the following year before we start to see any kind of a break. This is a real important podcast. I'm happy yeah. we're gonna get some perspective on this. So we're gonna spend some time talking to Mark Newsom and I'll introduce Mark as we get him on screen. So we are now sitting down with our dear friend, Mr. Mark Newsom, who's been our business partner for a very long time. And many of you may remember his smiling face from a podcast we did about a year ago now, I think, Mark. I think we had you on in, in December of last year. Yep. Uh, a little history. Mark and I go way back, uh, and I won't allow him to tell the stories of, of when we first met. But uh, again, uh, and obviously, I'm sitting here with Jack Higgins. But uh, Mark was the president of Harmony Products for a while. You also worked at Lebanon uh, Fertilizer for years before that, lawn care. Mark has been in the fertilizer business his entire professional career, and we've had the great honor and privilege of being able to work very closely with him here at Earthworks over the last 20-some years. And Mark and I have been through an awful lot, including a lot of spikes in prices, uh, unavailability. And, and Mark, you know, the theme of what we're trying to talk about today has been, you know, the, the marketplace as it is today. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like this. I think we've seen raw materials across the board. I mean, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about the 2008 price increase. Was that mostly nitrogen or did that cross a spectrum of all sorts of fertilizers? That was, that was all nutrients. And, it was all uh, nutrients. <clears throat> Yeah, it was all nutrients. The, I would guess the biggest the biggest difference uh, in the spike we saw back in, in 08 and the spike we're seeing now is that um, we this spike sort of started and, and we eased into it, whereas in 08, it just went straight up. And when it did go straight up, it occurred, it started and, and occurred during the prime fertilizer season or in the spring. Right. Um, so it, I think it was, and you'll probably remember this, Joel, it was the first time in, in our, you know, in our careers together that I increased prices during the season. I think I'm still cursing you about that. Yeah, right? we, we, we try not to do that price. because we know you lock into prices yeah. and it's very difficult for you. So we try to hold a price steady, you know, no matter what happens in the marketplace, unless it's just extreme. And that year it was extreme about five different times. And this uh, we year raised them and then we raised them. I remember raising prices and before I could even get the price increase out, they had increased again where it needed to be increased even further. Yeah. And that it, you know, we were looking at a, at a uh, unprecedented situation back then. Well, that, that spike came down and and met the year before prices and even lower. So the, the prices dropped as fast as they went up. 
in that spike. Will we see that in this particular season? I don't. I don't think we will. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've got to come down because they've gone up so high. I mean, some of these commodities have gone up four x. Well, that was a financial. That was a financial crisis uh, back then. It was. Uh, I won't say it was limited to the United States. It, it did occur other places, but this particular fertilizer spike is due. You know, one thing for just wor the world economy, yeah. uh, the co the COVID affecting fertilizer production in all countries, um, the exports of all countries. So you're seeing countries that didn't produce during this COVID era, and now they're needing more fertilizer, and they they need to cover their own needs, and they don't have exportable material. China stop exporting urea. Uh, they just, they needed it all. Yeah. Uh, because they had a coal crisis there as well. Uh, they were having to limit their electricity, if you remember. Right. Um, so energy also follows these types of, of spikes. So, you know, you really have uh, the decrease of, of production in other countries. Um, you have the supply crunch that's occurring in the United States. And, um, uh, and then you also have this phenomenon that it's well, really not a phenomenon. It's, 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 it's true that the population in the United States is growing every year. Right. The, the amount of agricultural land is decreasing every year. And so the, the crops that are produced have to be pushed to produce more. And that can be done with fertilizer. Right. You know, you uh, mentioned. So you mentioned you're, you're, going to, you're going to see a higher demand for fertilizer uh, for years to come. And I, that's why I do not, do not think this is going to come back. I mean, it will come back some. Absolutely will come back some. But we're, we're, we're in it for at least this spike until mid next year. And then I think it, if it, when it does come down, it'll come down very slowly. Um, you mentioned, Mark, how, how fertilizers tied in with uh, energy, with, with the energy sector. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do somewhat with the production of synthetic fertilizer. Is that right? That it does, Correct. it takes energy to produce fertilizer. Urea is produced with natural gas. Exactly. So we also see oil prices very high right now. Right. Um, so I imagine that those are that, that that's how it's tied together. Now, you, that's the that's the Haber Bosch process. They're still that's still how they make urea, right? That's that's correct. Yeah, they, they burn. They they it takes a lot of a lot of fossil fuel to get it done. You know, Mark, you, you talked about, you know, this how our distributors and our business partners you know, they try to set their prices so everybody can run their business. I mean, this affects uh, everybody in our industry, but it really affects people like lawn care operators because, you know, they set their prices very early on in the year to their customers. And to be able to go back and say, you know, I'm sorry, but the price of our commodities have gone up. It makes it for a very difficult situation for a lot of these guys. And a lot of guys simply don't write, raise their prices. And I remember in 08, and you probably remember this as well, we lost a lot of lawn care operators back in that those years because they didn't raise their prices and they took it on the chin and they ended up not being able to run their business. And, and it looks like, you know, we could be seeing that for a couple of years here. How do you how do you manage that? You know, you were in the lawn care business. How do you manage? Did you ever have to go through any of those kind of spikes when you were actually in lawn care? See, I, I, I don't really recall the, the fertilizer affecting lawn care as much as I did the economy in general. You know, when the, when the economy was very, very poor, um, you know, and, and interest rates were high, um, you know, we would think, well, there's gonna be less, you know, expendable income, and so our lawn care business is gonna suffer. Actually, during those times, we actually saw increases, like, sort of like we did over COVID. And that, yeah, there was less expendable income. People didn't go out to eat. They didn't take vacation. They stayed at home and tended to their lawns and their gardens. So, you know, you can't always predict exactly what, what's going to happen when the economy fluctuates. Uh, but you can certainly, 
you can certainly uh, determine what's going to happen when fertilizer prices double and right. triple. You know, that's interesting you say that. I mean, one of the industries in our market that's really uh, suffering is the seed industry. Uh, and these seed producers are actually selling more seed to the retail bags, you know, the, the box stores. And the prices on the box store shelf is 4X up for a little bag of seed. And, and that's where all the seed has been going. And there's been a, a reduction in production uh, and the price has gone up as much as 4X. I mean, anybody that's dealing with seed right now is dealing with the same crunch of, you know, supply and demand, you know, freight, cost of, of doing business. And it just seems to be a snowballing effect. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of frightening. And, and I think what we're trying to accomplish in this conversation is just simply helping people understand where this is and where it's going. We had the opportunity to talk to Lisa Kiefer about freight. And, yeah. and if it's okay, let me jump over to talk to her for a couple of minutes and come back and finish this conversation with okay. you so that we can uh, kind of get an idea as to where the freight picture falls into all of this. Which and, is huge, huge in fertilizer because oh, you're, you're yeah. all over the place. And we'll talk, yeah. when, you know, we'll talk about this. I mean, you, you've obviously been a big part of that. But let's uh, let's listen to Lisa here real quick, and then uh, and we'll come back and finish this conversation. All right, that sounds good. Hi, everybody. We are now uh, going to have a chance to sit down with our vice president of Earthworks, who has been with us for twenty two and a half years. And a half years. <laughs> She's very proud of that. Uh, Lisa Kiefer, who has uh, has been integral in the success of Earthworks, but most importantly has been really uh, in charge of the operations here at the company. And not only do we want to talk about the experiences that we've had at Earthworks, but I think this is a global conversation. Everybody in the industry that is dealing with supply chain issues, one of the biggest issues that we're fighting is trying to find trucks. Uh, LTO, which is less than truck load, which is the small loads, one pallets, two pallets, or full trucks are very difficult to come by. And the prices have done what in the last year and a half? They have absolutely doubled, if not more. Yeah, in some cases, more than doubled. Yes. So, I mean, this is, this is an issue for us here at Earthworks, but it's an issue for every manufacturer, everybody in the industry, and ultimately, and unfortunately, and I'm sorry to say this, it ultimately feeds down to you guys at the end users level, the superintendents, the sports turf managers. Uh, and, and probably the best thing, one of the things that we were really trying to accomplish today is Talk about how do we prepare for these kind of things? Because not only are the prices ridiculous, but it's sometimes impossible to find a truck. How, how What have you waited? You Certain times of year, it's a little more difficult, depending upon if you're going to the West Coast, if you're coming, uh, let's say, into Florida or through Georgia when it's peach season. Trucks are just not available for us. Or if they are, they probably are double the cost. So the peaches are taking our trucks. Is that what you're the trying to tell me? Peaches are taking our we're trucks. We're losing trucks to oranges peaches. to Florida peaches. Oranges and peaches. We're losing to peaches and oranges. That's just not right. We are, and we want to fill those trucks with chicken manure. We want to put poop on those trucks, or whatever it might be. So what's the what what is what are we looking at for the next year? I mean, it doesn't look like this is going to get any better. You've talked to these truckers, the, I have. the brokers, and every I day. have a relationship uh, with a company that I've been with for a number of years, and. I always try to get the best price for freight, um, but sometimes quality over the, the cost of freight is the most important thing. Yeah, I, sure can, I can call my guy on the weekend of a holiday and he will always answer the phone and help me out. Um, ordering early, no matter what product you're ordering, is probably the best. Uh, having that time to secure that truck, get that truck to you, cost effectively um, is always the best option. You've got to have some pretty interesting experiences in the last year with truckers. I mean, just finding them, getting them. Any good stories on, uh, remember that one time we had the trucker that parked in Baltimore and left his truck and went away? And never came back and we <laughs> had to try back. to find out yes. where, where. Where is this guy? And where's our manure, for God's sake? Most importantly, but I mean, I, I mean, it's just difficult to find a trucker. I mean, you've been waiting at some times this year uh, weeks to be, to be able to get a uh, to get a truck in in um, first in, time the... ever that I've ever had to wait a length of time. Um, always prided myself with getting an order in and getting it shipped yeah. just as quickly as possible. And there just aren't the drivers out there. And when you do find them, um, a perfect example is perhaps going out to the West Coast where I would pay a 
two, three thousand dollars. I'm now getting quotes of six thousand dollars. And these these gentlemen, these these women that are driving trucks, of course, they're going to go for the best price that they right. can. And that just does not work well for us. What about the LTLs? The the less than truck loads, the small LTLs loads? have been by far the absolute worst that I have ever seen. Uh, if you went up into the Michigan area, for example, I'm finding that there aren't enough LTL trucks out there. So they're putting our product in the back of a bread truck and getting it delivered to some of the locations. Really? Yes, there's See, just, I, I there's not enough help. Damages have never been higher. Uh, we always pride ourselves in trying to get everything to the customer in pristine condition. And it, with LTL, it is going to go from terminal to terminal. Uh, if there's more than a, one or two pallets, sometimes they'll lose a pallet. Yeah. So we could be waiting even longer because yes. there's just so few people getting stuff off the truck onto the dock or you know something. To I'm that sure effect. everybody's heard about the uh, the crisis uh, out off of uh, the, uh, the the, the coast in coastline. California. Yeah. You know they're trying to open up other ports to get uh, trucks in. There are only so many containers if we're shipping um, intermodal, needing those containers. Uh, we don't have the availability of those because they're sitting out in the ocean. So what are your guys telling you about the next uh, 12 months? Are we going to see a break on this? We are not. We are not. We are probably looking well into the end of next year uh, until we see any relief at all. Because there's still not going to be trucks or there's not going to be drivers or both? Both. Yeah. Both. I mean, we had a conversation with our banker the other day, and we were talking to our banker who was actually out there trying to find people to buy trucks and supporting them financially so that we can get more truckers on the road. And, and it just doesn't seem to even be affecting what's no, going on. And, you know, just one truck driver isn't going to yeah, do it. No, or 20 or, even. Or the masses, or that's correct. You know, it's, it's been really just unbelievable. And I think the moral of the story here is that everybody has to plan way ahead because the supply chain is damaged and we're struggling with that we had an issue with the plant and you you and i suffered through this where a simple little part was broken and it took them three four weeks to get that part which it usually would have been done in a day which push, pushes manufacturing back and then on top of that we've got we're trucking issues and Correct. you know so once we got product made again getting a truck it has been a nightmare and again like you said it's certain it's certain lanes that are really bad we just got a quote from uh, a lane coming in from the west coast to here which was 4x what it normally is yes now we were fortunate enough you were fortunate enough to be able to shop it around and bring it down a little bit but the price is going to be what it is and um, and as we're talking, uh, 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 you know, today, uh, one of the good things about what we're doing with carbon-based fertility is it actually brings the cost of, of what their operation is. But these are all real costs that everybody is going to be, you know, it's going to be passed on. I mean, we, it's just it, in order for anybody to run a business, these have to be passed on ultimately to the end user. And, and it Absolutely. doesn't look like it's going to be easy. I mean, it's just it's planning just, ahead, ordering early. That is always the key. Um, from the time you order till the time you get it from me, there is a bit of a process that everybody has to go through. So I would just suggest if you know you need something, place your order very yeah, early. Plan, 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 schedule, schedule, schedule. We do. We are getting some of our distributor partners now to pay attention to the supply chain, and they're 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 ordering now for next spring. And we, we still might be two, three, four weeks out from what we normally would like to be. I mean, you've been able to pull rabbits out of your hat for years where you get an order in and you'd have it on a truck that day and, and deliver it in a couple of days. And I, those days are certainly going to be gone for a while. And hopefully... I'd love to go back to them, but yeah. that is not going to be the case. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. And, and like you said, the idea of planning is going to be really important. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for spending a couple minutes with us explaining... Uh, what a lovely experience you're having with trucking. And we, we wish you the very best. Thank you. And have a wonderful holiday <laughs> so, so that you can get through yeah. this and then get back to finding more trucks next yes, week. Yes, absolutely. Right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. So, Mark, um, you know, you and I have been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, you know, and, and obviously, uh, Mark has been working with us and, and, and dealing with not only the commodities. I mean, you've been really the broker of some of these raw commodities. You know, one of the things that you I remember working with you over the years is that you were always able to find, uh, at least in our production cycle, some off spec stuff. Is that still a viable option for companies like ours? I mean, are we still getting some of that off spec or is, or is that market dried up and gone through the roof as well? 
Uh, there's not, there's not much, Joel. Um, there's, there's, you know, the price has gotten to the point where these uh, off-spec materials can be reprocessed. Um, so I have not, I have not seen any like, you know, we saw four, five, six years ago. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's uh, that's not an option. Although we also, although we still look for yeah. off-spec materials, um, it's not an option. Well, that's interesting. That kind of brings up the uniqueness of what we all do in, in this organic fertilizer world. We we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about how the commodity price of synthetic fertilizer is, is affecting the whole market. But you know, Joel opened up this part of the conversation where where we're unique in the organic fertilizer world. You were able to use uh, off-spec, which I think was off-spec sizing, right? It really, it wasn't necessarily off-spec nutrient quant con content. It was more off-spec size of, of those materials. That's that correct. And we, we could also use off-spec off uh, nutrient levels uh, just by changing the formulations. Uh, but, but I mean, we've even bought off, believe it or not, you know, some, some products like uh, Neutraline that we might use may be off spec and color only. Wow. And, so, <laughs> and they can't sell it to at normal prices. Is that right? That's correct. But we, um, since we homogenize everything, we don't care about the color. Be, because the majority of what we're doing is the chicken manure compost. Yes. And, and, and that's really kind of the crux of, of the difference here uh, to our approach and, and how that approach is more stable than this whole fluctuating fertilizer market. Yeah, the, if, you're, if, you're, um, if your base nutrient is manure, the NPK of manure, uh, certainly the NPK is, is more valuable in that product. And so you're going to see some increase in manure during these spikes in synthetic fertilizer. It just, it goes hand in hand. Back in, back in uh, 08, um, the manure spiked as high as it's, as, as it's ever been. It never went back to that level. And um, it was still just a fraction of what, you know, uh, what other nutrients did, but it still went up. Oh, that's so interesting. So you think, saw price increases. Yeah, um, I think it was easy to assume that the manure stayed exactly the same, but but it really doesn't because it's just the cost of nutrient. The well, there's incremental increases in cost due to inflation, inflation, and that sort of thing. But um, you know, the uh, the increase of the nutrients is going to be increased somewhat just because you know, you're managing a business and it's supply and demand. And whether it's coming from urea or manure, nitrogen is nitrogen. So there is going to be some increases in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium during these spikes with manure, but they are not going to follow uh, the exact curve of a synthetic fertilizer. Uh, it's one of the advantages, one of the non-agronomic advantages of using manure. Mm -hmm. It truly is. You know, it's funny, we saw that in 08. And that was the first experience I had with that. You know, we had these big spikes, you know, and as I've been saying, you know, for a while now, we've had these big spikes where, uh, you know, the synthetic market went way up and we went up, but we, we actually stabilized closer to the value or the price of synthetic fertilizers. But the usage rate is significantly less after a short period of time. So, you know, we're trying to promote the concept of this is the best time. I mean, the good news, the silver lining behind all of this is now there's an opportunity for folks to start, you know, building their soil so they can start truly reducing inputs. And we had the great opportunity in 08 to talk with a number of our lawn care operators. And this is just an example of the marketplace, but because they're businessmen and it's profit to them as opposed to managing somebody else's budget, they started to see, wow, if I start putting you know, uh, a, a carbon-based fertilizer on my lawns, I can start reducing my input and change my business model. And many of them have stuck to that you know, for all these years and, and have built wonderful businesses. So we're pretty, you know, I, I shouldn't say I'm ever excited about these kind of price increases and it's a struggle and we fight every day. And you heard Lisa's talk about how she's struggling to get trucks and the whole nine yards. And needless to say, we don't wish ill will on any of our, our end user clients and having to spend more money, but here's an opportunity to start looking at making a change 
in the exactly. way they do the business. And we've There's seen a it. huge advantage in carbon based fertilizers during these spikes. Yeah. And you can look at this spike as occurring very rapidly, but just over the period of time for the next 20 years, you're going to see fertilizer prices steadily increase. And that will be buffered somewhat if you're on a carbon based program. Yes. Think about what you could do to the soil on your property over 20 years. You know, oh so, my gosh. So yeah. you could make that those sort of changes in your root zone. And 20 years later, you, your needs are even further less because of your agronomic practice. But if they keep using this stuff, they're gonna put us out of business because they that, won't. Be well, you know, that's that, not a good that, thing. That, that was finish. told to me. Uh, <laughs> that was explained to me by a a uh, a fertilizer, well, the president of a fertilizer company that I worked for years ago, I walked into his office and I said, the more organic we put in here, the less fertilizer they're going to need. And he goes, well, what are you talking about? What do we want to do that for? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just saying this when we were talking to Lisa, you know, I didn't know that when we first started. You never told me that. Jerry Brunetti never shared that with me. I just started noticing guys are using less. I'm like, wait, you can't be using less. I need this income. But, you know, I mean, we <laughs> We have a, a very strong partner up in New England, Tom Irwin Company, and, and they're, they're so focused on what we're doing that all of their clients are significantly using less. They come to me at meetings and apologize. Hey, man, I'm sorry. You know, I just don't need it anymore. And I don't be sorry. That's, the, that's what we were hoping to have happen. So, you know, again, this is a great way to buffer uh, this whole uh, spike. And like you said, I mean, and this scares me to no end. I mean, and, and, and uh, you know, you said it pretty definitively. This doesn't look like we're going to get out of it uh, fast. I mean, maybe, you know, you said the middle of next year. I, I haven't heard that yet. I've heard the middle of uh, 2023, maybe 2024. Yeah. You know, ironically, great. when I when I uh, turned the computer on for the Zoom uh, before we started here, uh, I just glanced at my emails and, um, you know, where, where we purchase our nitrogen, uh, when up, it's going up seventy dollars December first per oh, ton of your well, and this is the uh, first I've heard. Are, this? Most people are most familiar with urea, seventy dollars a ton. That that's 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 nuts. Yeah, that's absolutely nuts. So I, I'm working with a distributor partner. They mentioned to me that they were maybe buying urea in last January for three hundred dollars a ton and now they're looking at more like nine hundred or a thousand dollars a ton that's correct and yeah. their freight cost of getting it in is three times the cost so you know again you know one of the things we've been trying to impress upon everybody for from this conversation is plan ahead because it could be hard to get it and and the earlier you buy most likely it's going to be a savings and well and yeah gonna... and there could be there could be fertilizer crunch next yeah. year um, it's if you can buy it at a thousand bucks, if you can buy it, mm. um, there hasn't, there's only been one fertilizer co company, new manufacturer built in the United States in the past 30 years. Oh my really? gosh. I never knew that. Now what, what's well, it's, it's, it's environment, it's restrictions. It's, you know, you just can't build a chemical plant anymore. Well, yeah, we talked about the Haber Bosch process. This is a very high energy use business and, you know, they're, news to everyone they regulate high energy use businesses that's that's kind of what they're trying to do right now they do i mean even the permits that we had um uh producing your fertilizer joel uh we could only we could only run our permits dictated that we could only run the dryers so long mm -hmm. uh and we're, we were burning natural gas if we were burning oil we could have only run them about three hours a day Wow. So, because of the supply of the of the energy? Because of the pollutants from the oh, because of the release of the oil. Yeah. Yeah. And natural yeah. gas is much more efficient than oil. Yeah. So is is this so we talked a lot about nitrogen. Is we're seeing the same thing. I mean, I, I know we were just recently working with the plant trying to find potassium. And it's been a nightmare. I mean, it's been a real slowdown in us being able to get that yeah. raw material in. Potash has increased uh, just as rapidly as, as urea has and continues to do so. Uh, and the United States is uh, the largest producer of phosphates in the world, mm -hmm. and they continue to increase. Now, luckily, we don't use many phosphates. We're, we're blessed in having a lot of phosphate in our base material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, 
you know, we do supplement, we do supplement with, with synthetic nitrogen and, and potash at times. I'm certain. And, um, uh, what's that uncertain of our firm formulas we have supplement oh yeah that's that's correct and so you know the ones that, that we supplement more you know this is where you're going to see the separation start next year is the products like you know the 16 percent product is probably going to have a larger <laughs> increase mm -hmm. than the than the 343 product yeah well we had a big spike in our a22 this year because of ammonium sulfate that's correct it went through uh, the road and, you know, we did not, I, you know, uh, we did not increase that price halfway through the year. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be a, a situation. It's just going to have to be monitored. I mean, it, the yeah. way nitrogen is increasing, uh, we could be back at those 08 mid spring increases. I mean, it just it's, it's nothing that the end user has, is not familiar with. They saw it all year in 2021. Um, there, there were in increased fertilizer prices all year long in the, in the market, not at Earthworks. And, and not only increases, but there's companies that just simply haven't been able to supply product. I've talked to superintendents that said they ordered, you know, some fertilizer three, four months ago and still haven't gotten it. Mm -hmm. and I can understand that. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, fortunately, again, for what we're doing, and again, I'll, I'll keep coming back to the, the, what I consider the silver lining, is about what we're doing is providing uh, a material that is domestic, you know, where it's being manufactured here in the country. So we're not going overseas to find raw materials for the most part. And, you know, the benefits to the soil are allowing the soil to work better, increase microbial populations. The more efficient that microbial population is, the more efficient even the synthetic fertilizers that we might use or they might use separately are going to go through nitrification more importantly. So this is really the op opportune time to really jump on this bandwagon that's been oh, running it truly for is. 30 years. Yeah, if you needed a push, uh, this right. is where you're really going to see it. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the pocketbook, you know, that's when that's when people change their minds is when it comes down to the dollars. Yeah. Exactly right. And so, then, then you'll start using less because you're the soil's working so much more efficiently. And then I'll have to go out, pay, pound the pavement exactly. and find more customers. Find, yeah. Yeah. Well, you could do that now, actually. Be fine. <laughs> but, so you know, these, the, guys, these guys that are pushed to, to, to go in higher organic levels uh, during this time, we know what happens when you start using organics. Very few go ever, back. ever discontinue the use. You never go That's back. Exactly the loyalty. Right. Go I mean, back. obviously, we work very hard at maintaining that loyalty. But when you see it, you know, when, with your own eyes, when you see what a carbon-based fertility program can do, you're right. You never go back. I mean, you saw it years before I got into this business. You know, I've been seeing it for 35 years. You know, uh, you know, everybody that jumps on the bandwagon stays on on that path at least to some level and is able to reduce their inputs. And it's really been quite spectacular to see the growth of that market. And then look at all the people that are jumping on the bandwagon of just you know bringing out organic fertilizers. I mean, you, you can't go to a trade show and not see three or four new organic fertilizer companies. You and exactly. I have been doing this, you and I have been doing this for so long that I mean you and I would walk around the show at the national turf show and you know every year say, hey look, there's new one, there's new one, there's new one. And then Two years later, we'd walk around and guess, what happened to that guy? What happened to that guy? You know, we've been fortunate enough to have good partners like you and, and Rose Acres to really help us get through, uh, you know, some pretty tough times, but, um, and have a good supply. I mean, you were mentioning, you know, the environmental uh, issues with building a new plant, but forget, how about the cost of building a plant? Even, even our kind of plants. I mean, it's millions of dollars to get this. Well, that's, that's the cost or the, the, the permits and, and yeah. all those. But I mean, it's just, we're just, our hands are tied in this country to be able to produce things like that. And, you, you know, you would think there would be more leniency when it comes to producing items we need to feed the people, but we would rather import urea from China yeah. than we would produce it here in the United States. And then when China says, okay, we're, we need to turn the spigot off, then we have we're no in trouble. Either. It's true. Yeah, there's no spigot to be had. Yeah. Oh, you said no politics. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's not politics. That's, that's actually. It's not factual. politics. That's reality. That's reality. That's factual. <laughs> exactly. So, but that is the re you know, and and again, that's one of the blessings that we have is that we are a domestic-based fertility manufacturer. So everything, and, and and the chickens don't stop pooping. So 
you know, it's, it's, it's kind of good. Of course, if the price of eggs go up a little bit, it would be nice so we could keep the chickens in the houses, but, but yeah, it's been a, uh, it's been an interesting uh, experience. I mean, I'm always baffled by the scale of economy in this industry. And, and this is really where it comes to roost. And, and when you see these spikes happening as fast as they have, and again, you know, like you said, we're still seeing price increases and we're going to see them, you know, 2022 is going to be uh, one that's going to be rich in price increases. So planning ahead, building better soils programs, getting soil testing. Not only that, or, you know, we're also helping to manage what will probably become another huge commodity problem, which is water. We're managing the moisture levels in the soil by building humus and managing the reduction of water usage. And I can assure you that that's going to be, uh, we're going to have the same conversation in a handful of years if we're still alive uh, to talk about, you know, the commodity of water. So, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty big subject matter that's affecting everybody in our community here in the turf management community and, and agriculture in general. And, uh, and it's not going to be an easy uh, crawl out of this hole that we're fighting. Any words I just of look forward to the day when we, we start running out of organics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Well, oh wouldn't that my. mean that there's no chicken or turkey or anything like that? <laughs> so let's hope. I don't think that'll happen. happen anytime soon. Um, I actually did a study on that several years ago, but uh, and it looked like we had enough organic uh, for for the market, uh, considering that agriculture is still a fairly low percentage user uh, as a whole. Yeah. Uh, of organics. Um, but um, so uh, what there will be a day. Right. I think there will be a day. Uh, I said this 10 years ago, and I'm not, you know, what didn't hit it exactly, but um, there'll be a day when there's organics put in every fertilizer blend that goes out. And I think that's coming to fruition very quickly. I mean, be, if it's not a humic uh, substance, it'll be some uh, kind of a. a quickly a, is relative. I said that 10 years ago, and it hasn't happened yet, but I will tell you this. There's organics put in a whole lot more blends now than there were 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, we're getting calls on that all the time. And look at some of the biggest companies that are using humates as part of their, you know, instead of putting down right. gypsum or limestone, they're putting down a humate or a carbon source. It makes oh, the fertilizers yeah. work better. When, when you see some of these big, big, big synthetic companies introduce a humate into their line, you know that... Uh, you know, they're getting pushed some, yeah. from somewhere. Well, you've heard my stories on that. I mean, 20 years ago, Jerry and I would sit at a booth and we'd get called every name in the book because we had humic acids in our uh, booth. And that's, uh, yeah. that's the end of the world and snake oil. And now the same people that were doing this have them in all of their product lines because they're realizing it makes their fertilizers last better and work better. It goes through the carbon to nitrogen cycle a little bit better which is, you know, which is uh, really extremely important. And that's what this has always been well, about is you, getting you the were, you, you were, and now Jack and, you know, myself to, to, to a high degree, we were, we were soil scientists. We weren't, we weren't fertilizer yeah. managers. We weren't trying to make the most money we could. We were, we started out as soil scientists. Mm -hmm. That's what we started out as. And we, you know, and, and again, I'll, I'll go back to this, you know, the, the passion that Jerry brought to the table that I followed through with. I mean, this has really been a labor of love and it's been, you know, all of everything that we owned on the table and taken all that risk to help people discover that this really is the way to go. And, and you're right, none of us have ever made, you know, a fortune in any of this. We're not billionaires by any stretch, uh, but, uh, but it has been a labor of love and, you know, having a chance to work with you for 20 years and share your bourbon has been, you know, worth the whole, you know, the time that uh, <laughs> has been, although I should be showing the picture of you in the earthworks pool, but that's a different story altogether. It's, I think that's still on the bulletin board here in the thing. Mark, thank you so much for spending some time with us and for all your support uh, over all the years. Uh, we wish you the very best. We will get you back on here again, as I promised. Maybe this will be a yearly adventure Somewhere around yeah. the holidays. Uh, it is the week of Thanksgiving, so I'll wish you and your family a wonderful Thanksgiving and, and certainly a great holiday season coming up. But uh, this is an important subject, and, uh, and we wanted to have a chance to bring you on board and get your insight as to the global uh, situation here that we're facing. And, and again, hopefully uh, enticing some people to um, kind of look at what we're doing. Yeah, I think the good news is that it's not all doom and gloom. You it's know? not all doom and gloom. Like, oh, no, no, no. 
we're, no. we're, we're soil scientists we, yeah. and we get this and and this is the opportunity to yeah. to really get that carbon into your root zone you know this is the foundation of what jerry lived by the regenerative agriculture and there's a great piece that i've talked about years before that's on netflix called kiss the ground uh and it really talks about how we can save uh, you know, the soil and, and, and the atmosphere in a lot of ways by just getting the soil to work correctly. And that's really all we've been trying to talk about is just get the soil to work the way Mother Nature got it to work. And that's carbon and that's getting carbon into the soil. And like you said, I completely agree with you. I think, and this might put me out of business, but in the next handful of years, the big guys that are way ahead of us are going to come in and steal up all this carbon. <laughs> and unfortunately, my man Jack here is still trying to feed his family. I'll be done by then, so it'll all be good. But but that's a direction that clearly is going to be one of necessity because you know this is how the um, you know the market really works and, and the soil really works. So uh, we're going to keep talking the talk, Mark, and uh, continue the following. Well, thanks. Year. I'll uh, I'll share with you anytime you'd like, Joel. And uh, so we'll call yeah. on you again. You know. Appreciate that. Appreciate you inviting me today and uh, happy holidays to you and Jack as well. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Happy holidays to you. Also, another holiday I'll throw out there because I think it's coming up when we release this On is what? What? National Soils, Soils Day. Day. The fifth of oh, the nice. National Soils Day. We'll I have to circle little... that on my calendar. You should. It's a big part of the holiday here at Earthwork. <laughs> We'll put a little podcast out next week on the on the Soils Day, but it's a day where people start, you know, where the Soil Institute has really come out and and decided let's get some exposure to the to these kind of ideas. And again, Kiss the Ground has gotten really aggressive. They've got a wonderful uh, uh, following on their on their uh, Twitter feed and, uh, and 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 a lot of other social medias. But it's a great way to get to understand how a soil works. But yeah, National Soils Day is the fifth of, of December. All so the soil heads about. will love this talk. This was Absolutely. this is all about soils. It's all so. about soils. It's all about soils. Mark, have a wonderful holiday. Thank you so much. And I want to remind everybody if you're not already subscribing to the Earthworks podcast, please get on. Please subscribe. We are everywhere you can find a podcast. But if you subscribe, we'll get everything to you before it even comes out and you'll get uh, notified and you'll get to see great conversations like the one we just had with Mr. Newsom. And find us on YouTube. We got a good YouTube channel uh, and you can Sounds unfortunately good. have to see our face on that one, but that's OK. It's all good. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mark. See you. See you next time.